kill uh, destruction that was done and deliberately, deliberately unprovoked and with a pre-planned, in a pre-planned manner. This is a blatant violation of our constitution, of the democratic rights guaranteed by our constitution and of essentially elementary human rights. And this is the real character of the BJP in the state of Tripura. For three years they have been in government. It is very clear that the growing discontent against their misrule. The BJP's standard practice of promising many things before the elections and never implementing any one of them. All this was leading to large-scale discontent and people's protests. The CPM and the Red Flag and the Left Front were in the forefront of these protests. And in order not to allow such process to galvanize and get concentrated into an anti-BJP sentiment in the state, these sort of attacks have been unleashed. This is the political reason for this sort of a thing that is being done, blatantly violating every constitutional tenet. Since 2018, since they've come, 21 CPIM workers and cadre have been martyred. And this time, before all these attacks, the slogan that was always being shouted was Jai Shri Ram. Police would be standing there as bystanders. In fact, often protecting the BJP people uh, who were indulging in this sort of violence. And the police was acting completely as the agent of the ruling BJP government in the state. And the worst is that despite representations made to the Prime Minister, Besides making all representation to the central government authorities, there has not even been an acknowledgement to the letter I wrote to the Prime Minister detailing all these attacks. But in any opposition rule states, any such attack by the ruling party in those states, the non-BJP ruling parties, you see the big hue and cry and the manner in which the entire administration comes down saying that political violence is being perpetuated in these states. So clearly when they commit violence, there's a different set of rules. Now in this situation, the statue of Comrade Dasraddhe, a legendary leader of the Ganamakti Parishad, when he led the tribals to encircle the palace of the then Raja, forcing him to sign the, uh, the accord, that Tripura will be part of the Indian Union. It is that legacy in that history, even their statues were not spared. They have nothing to do with the legacy of, the, of Tripura, its history or its people's struggles. So in this situation, we are demanding that the action should be taken against all those whom we can identify in all these videos. Action should be taken against all of them and compensation be given to all those whose houses have been destroyed, whose properties have been destroyed, and those who have been injured, and immediately withdraw all the false cases that they have filed against us, against our, our comrades. This is a political challenge, and we would like to warn the BJP not to indulge in such violence attacks. Such violence and terror will not be tolerated. And this is a challenge that we will rise to meet. We are already meeting. We will continue to meet this challenge. And the people of Tripura will not be cowed down by such terror so that they think that they can continue to be in their government and rule the state. So that is what we are immediately demanding. You have the press uh, uh, note with you. You also have as an extras, a folder that gives you all the information on all these attacks and all the pictorial the graphic presentation of how these attacks have taken place. Those have all been circulated to you. So I'm not going to repeat those details. Comrade so Manik Sarkar is here with us. So he will be sharing his direct experience of, uh, of, of what has happened in Tripura and what is likely to continue to happen in Tripura. So Manik <coughs> Uh -huh. 
Shed, shed, give there. Ah, ah. Oh, you come here. Is this water? No, it's okay. What to do? This is the constraints of technology in the COVID area. Thank you very much for attending this press conference. I shall not take much of your time. What I would like to say, in Tripura, constitution of India does not work. Why I am saying so? During their regime, 41 months they have already completed they have entered 42nd month, in half of the 42nd month. Before completion of the tenure of local self-government, elected during left on government times, they broken down. Both urban and rural. They organized elections in 90% constituencies. Opposition political parties did not allow to submit their nomination paper. You can well imagine. Then come to the parliament election 2019. Wholesale rigging. After 1952, such a big number of repolling in a particular parliamentary constituency was not ordered. Election Commission was ultimately forced to give this order. Though we were opposing that, we were demanding to countermand that election. They did not listen to us. This is what is going on. Opposition, according to our constitution, in parliamentary democracy, opposition has a very important role inside the parliament, outside the parliament. But the opposition in Tripura, of course, they have started their attack, focusing CPIM first, ultimately, gradually, gradually, other left parties, and even Congress was also not spared. They are not being allowed to undertake their democratic functioning and activities. I am not going to cite you any figure. Already all these things have been distributed to you. Please kindly see. MLS belonging to opposition political parties. At this moment, in Tripura, out of 60 member assembly, we have 16 MLS. They are all belonging to CPI. Most of our MLS have not been allowed to go to their own constituencies and even other parts of the state, including me. I am telling you, during last 41, 42 months, more than 50 times, 15 times, I have been prevented from visiting various parts of the state, including the constituencies where the electorate blessed me to represent them on their behalf to the Tripura Legislative Assembly. That is what is happening. Three of our MLS, including senior one, Badal Chodhi, then Radhan Bhumi, then Sudandas, physically they have been attacked. So what is going on? That's why I am telling all these things. Press, they have been attacked like anything. I am not talking right from the beginning. During last one and a half year, COVID period, more than 35 Media person physically attacked. Five electronic media, this or that plea, they have virtually banned. And on that particular eighth, at Agartala, the capital town of the state, you have seen 
other than our party offices, four media houses have been attacked. Not the media alone, advocates who are courageously trying to stand in favor of the tortured people, their houses are being attacked, ransacked, looted, even in the premise of court, one or two advocates, they have been physically attacked. No protection of human rights. That's why I am telling that constitution of India does not work there. And it appears that Tripura is perhaps out of India. Nowhere in other parts of the country, any state, this type of attacks are being meted out against the opposition. So what is going on? I think people of Tripura, as well as the people of our country, they do not believe that all these things which are going on there in Tripura without the knowledge of the government of India and their political party. But no interference. What our general secretary has emphatically said, this should be stopped. Who will stop it? So this is the situation. Why they are doing all these things? Because their performance is zero. I am not saying zero, minus zero. What they promised before the assembly election, after getting elected, they have taken completely volta face. They have cheated the unemployed youth. They have cheated the teachers and employees. They have cheated rural and urban poor. They have cheated our mothers and sisters, that is what is going on. I don't like to <coughs> detail out all these things. So in this situation, why they are attacking us? Because right from the beginning, despite all these attacks, braving all odds, CPIM, Communist Party of India Marxists, together with left, trying to mobilize people just for their livelihood, nothing else. After the publication of the results, we have publicly accepted the mandate of the people and made this point clear, yes, we would extend our cooperation to the government if they seriously implement their election promises. If we find they are taking anti-people policies, wrong stance, which is detrimental to the interest of the state, we will oppose it. Of course, in a very constructive manner, we will submit our point. If they accept, all right. If they don't accept, it is to the people of Tripura, they should decide what is what. So, in this state, actually, they have converted Tripura as their laboratory, I should say. I am being forced to say so. Laboratory, laboratory of what? One party, dictatorial, fascistic regime. Might be Tripura is a small state of 40 lakhs population at this moment, perhaps. But if they are successful there in Tripura, ultimately that will be replicated in other parts of the country. And ultimately, for the whole country, they are planning to do so. So, this is not the problem of Tripura alone, problem of the Tripura democratic-minded, secular-minded, peace-loving people. This is the problem of the sensitive, sensitive people of our country who are democratic, who are secular, who are peace-loving, love the country. So we would extend our request to all of them. They should protest it, denounce it, and ask the government of India to stop all this fascistic attack. This is what is I would like to tell before you this much. Really? So if you, I don't think it will be any questions anybody has?